You'll recall that when this tragic event happened more than a month ago, we had a window of opportunity of eight days to rescue the people. And we worked around the clock with the best people available in the world to, to, to do that. Unfortunately, we suffered a major setback on the Saturday following the event, some eight days afterwards. And that setback had caused us to, to reconsider everything, and we had to withdraw everybody from the rescue operation on a temporary basis. We then, as you know, drilled a second outlet so that we could still conduct the operations from the ventilation shaft, only to be disappointed to find that the ventilation shaft and the underground workings from which we were conducting the rescue operations were severely damaged and compromised by additional falls of ground underground. This is not surprising in many ways because that's what happens when a sinkhole occurs and uh, it's very unstable for weeks and months after the event. And we've now decided after getting expert geotechnical specialists to advise us that the ventilation shaft itself, the very place that we're going to conduct the rescue operation, is so dangerous that we cannot afford to send anybody down there. We cannot afford to do any rescue or recovery operations from that shaft, even though we've now got a second outlet through the hole we drilled. So after much thinking and consultation with experts who are internationally acclaimed, we have come up with a plan which is to develop a new decline. It's an inclined tunnel, if you like. It's not really a shaft, but it's called a decline. It will be based some 500 meters away from the sinkhole and the disturbed area. And so it's an entirely safe environment. And that is very important to us, given what we've just been through in the last five weeks. This decline will go in at an angle. It will intersect between four and five level on the current workings in a very safe part of the mine. And we will then be able to recommence the rescue and recovery operations from that safe environment at the point that we want to locate the, the container. Unfortunately, this takes time. We have to finish planning it, but we've most done most of that work. We're now going to schedule it out, arrange for the equipment and the contractors to come in, although most of the work is going to be done by the mine itself and our own employees. And we anticipate that work will start next week. Um, as soon as we get down into the workings again, we'll be able to recommence the operation from the position we were at before. But we can attack it from a number of different safer points, and that's why we're so much more optimistic about achieving success. Now, I want to caution you that we have been optimistic before, and um, it's not false optimism. We really had a chance, and we still do have a very good chance of recovering the container and the occupants. I think finally, um, I need to just stress that this event, this sinkhole, is absolutely huge. It is very, very complicated in terms of why it happened. So many people have asked me over the last few weeks why it happened. I cannot tell you, and nor can all the individual specialist geotechnical engineers. They've looked at it, they're just as perplexed as we are, and they don't understand why it happened. It happened very suddenly and without warning. So we're doing the best under the circumstances, and I think our solution is twofold, in that once we do get to that position, and if we are able to achieve our objective of becoming the container, we will have the option to reopen the mine with immediate effect thereafter, provided we get the go-ahead from the DMR, who have been incredibly supportive. And in doing so, we can reopen the mine, we'll be able to get back into full production with all our employees as we've always wanted.